Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. This is your day. I'm Bishop George Bloomer, and I'm thanking God for the glorious opportunity to be able to come into your homes and sit in for Pastor Benny. Miracles are about to take place in your life today. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life starting right now. I have something to share with you today. First thing I want to say to you is God bless you for crossing over. This year is going to be a dynamic, didactic year. I'm going to talk to you for a few moments today here in the Healing Center, here in the Healing Church, where Pastor Benny has been known and used of God to minister to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of people over the years have given testimonies and praise reports on how the Lord has delivered and set them free and healed their diseases and sicknesses and mended their broken hearts back together. That's why today it's so important that I come to you because oftentimes I've heard the testimonies and I've watched on television, but this miracle has hit my own home. I wanna to talk to you today because 77 days ago, 77 days ago, I experienced a miracle from God and I want to talk to you about it. I received the telephone call from my mother who is in her 80s. My sisters and brothers had all called us and said, mom had a massive heart attack. You could imagine how we felt. A massive heart attack just about the time that everyone is preparing and getting ready for the Thanksgiving holiday seasons and then we get this bad news that mom had a heart attack. They rushed her to the hospital and her heart stopped twice, two times her heart stopped, which is equivalent to having three heart attacks in one week. I tell you, I can only begin to try to explain to you what we began to experience in that house. Uh, they had to jumpstart her heart again and in doing it because she was old and frail, they cracked her ribs and uh, fluid began to fill up in her lungs. Shortly after that, we began to ex uh, understand that because her heart wasn't pumping the blood as it should, her kidneys began to fail. So now you have fluid on the lungs, the kidneys are failing, and my mom is in a coma. My sisters are coming together and they're calling the undertakers the, and they're trying to you know, make plans. This is the end. And I begin to believe what my mom told me many years ago when she was doing well. When I was sick and I was going through a very, very difficult time in my life and I called my mom and I said, Mom, they found cancer in my liver and they say they have to operate and I don't know if I'm gonna make it or not. She says, son, you're on television telling people about Jesus, telling people about healing. What you need to do is believe in the God that you've been telling other people about. She said, you believe in the sowing seed? I said, Ma, everything I know about seed sowing, I got it from you. Everything I know about seed sowing, I got it uh, from you, and you got it from me. She said, well, then you need to get a seed, sow a seed, and place a demand on the seed. And that's exactly what I did. I was 396 pounds. I had diabetes. I was going to sleep with a mass on my face. I was bleeding through my toes. My life was just about over, and my mother spoke this word. She said, get a seed. Place a seed in the soil and place a demand on the seed. So that was the thing that I was hearing in my head when I got this horrible news that she was in trouble going through a very, very difficult time. I called my good friend, Pastor Benny, and I said, Pastor Benny, my mama uh, 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 had a heart attack. He said, oh, dear Lord, I'm going to believe God with you. And the man of God began to believe the Lord with me. I went to the hospital in South Carolina and I filled the room with the presence of God with prayer. I took a prayer cloth that I had consecrated and prayed God for. And while the doctors was looking another way, I pinned it to my mother's uh, garment and I began to believe God for. I kept the room filled with sacred 
sacred music and I began to believe God for a miracle. A miracle was about to take place in the life of my mother, even though the rest of the family was preparing for her to go. I want to tell you something. She was in a coma. We stood around the bed and I brought these pictures here because I wanted you to see it. That's her in the coma. There she is. And we began to believe God, trusting and believing in the Lord while the family was preparing to send her home. It was not her time yet. It was time to trust and believe in God. And so I prayed. This is a picture of how the Lord touched because I went back to my church for five weeks, five Sundays, every Sunday, I got a supernatural sacrificial seed of, belief, of release for $1,000 and I sold a seed on behalf of my mother because she taught me that when you wanna get the attention of God, sow a seed and place a demand on the seed. I sold that seed. The picture that you're watching on the screen now is my mother came up out of the coma. God brought her up out of the coma. We touched and agreed. We believed, we prayed, and this picture that you're watching right now is her standing up. You see her in that wonderful green uh, warm-up suit with her white Air Force Ones on? Because today, she is home. That's why I'm here in the ministry today. I came to the ministry, I came to the ministry of Pastor Benny Hinn. I came to my brother uh, who I touched and agree with and believed God for a miracle for, for, so, for so many years. We have seen this take place in other people's lives, but today I have a testimony. And the testimony that I have is simply this, that the God that did it for those others, he did it for us. And I come to tell you that God is about to do something supernatural for you in your life today. Miracles are about to take place in your life. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of a testimony. It's time for you to grab a hold of faith and believe that this is going to be the year of supernatural miracles in the life of every believer. I told you before, I've watched it on television. I've seen, I've heard testimonies. I'm a pastor myself. I've listened to the testimonies and I've heard people testify. But now I have my own story. I have my own miracle. My mother was released from hospice and she's home in her house in her 80s. The God that we serve is still a miracle working God. And he is about to work miracles in your life today is the beginning of the rest of your life starting right now. And I sense in my spirit that there are many of you who are just about ready to give up. I wanna tell you a quick story because there are no true desolate places. There are no true barren places. There are no true barren wombs. There is a devil. His name is Lucifer and he uses spirits of infirmity to trick you. This is demonic attacks disguising as sicknesses. And I come to break that in the name of Jesus. The man of God who the Lord has anointed to bring healing to the nation has, uh, 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 has, uh, a partnered up with the man that God has given me an anointing to break demonic curses over your life. And I want you to hear the word of the Lord that comes out of this scripture that God had given me. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter number 36, verse number 21. It says, to fulfill the word of the Lord from the mouth of Jeremiah until the land enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lied desolate, she kept Sabbaths to fulfill threescore and ten. My God, my God, the word of the Lord is clear here. It said that the Lord had made a promise to the children of Israel that he was going to bring them into a land that was sworn unto their forefathers. But when they got into the land, they realized that the land seemed or appeared to be desolate, where nothing would grow, barren, where nothing would grow, nothing would be conceived there. But the Lord says, I want you to understand something. Here is a rule that you plant for six years and one year you rest. Six years and you rest. Six years and you rest. But the occupants of the land did not give the land enough time to rest. 
So what God did when he turned the land over to the children of Israel, he says, listen here, this land is going to rest for 70 years, but at the end of the 70 years, I'm going to cause it to produce. I'm going to cause it to bring forth the blessings that I had sworn unto your forefathers. I want you to know today that your blessing, you're not in a desolate place. You're not in a place of barrenness. Your blessing is resting. And in this hour, God is trying to get each and every believer that understands the word of the Lord, that he's going to take you to a place that seems to be barren, that seems to be desolate, that seems to be a place of lack. And when you or your feet step on the soil of that area, miracles are going to take place on your behalf because your blessing is resting. And I have experienced this blessing in my life when God raised up my mother out of her from her sick bed to what looked like a deathbed to what looked like hospice to home. The God that I serve is able to do that. I want you to know tonight that every demon, every hell hound, every witch and warlock, every, every negative word that has been spoken against you is about to be broken by the power of God. There are those of you who are watching today, I want you to understand that God wants to bring you into a supernatural place of faith. And I want to challenge you in a few moments. I want to challenge you, those of you who are watching, to do what I did, to do what I did. It's not a mistake that I'm here at the world uh, headquarters of, of healing, deliverance, and breakthrough with Pastor Benny. It's not a mistake that I'm sitting in this chair today and you have turned on the television because it's time for you to walk in the supernatural and receive the miracle working power of God to set an atmosphere that will cause demons to run in the opposite direction. Oh, glory to God. I feel the presence of the Lord. Today is the day that you need to hear the word of God and obey the man of God as I begin to speak this word to you. For this is the hour, this moment is the moment and the hour that you need to get your hand on a supernatural sacrificial seed of release and sow it a supernatural sacrificial seed of release in order to sow it. And as you sow that seed, you place a demand on the seed. Hallelujah. And God is about to move on your behalf. I know in the next few days, the telephones are going to ring. The mail is going to be jammed with miracles because God supernaturally set me in this chair and set you on the other side of the camera to hear this word of breakthrough and deliverance. And I come to tell you what the Holy Spirit spoke to me as what it was going to do. 2016 is the year of the crossover. We're coming out of the old into the new. Glory be to God, you made it. You have made it. But there's going to be blessings in the face of curses. You will see in this year that the enemy will rise up rise up in some of the most demonic ways. There will be fights. There will be racial wars. There will be all carnage. There will be all different types of things that you're going to see. But remember what the word of the Lord says. It says, rise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Though darkness shall cover the earth, the scripture says, even gross darkness, the people, that the people of God, glory be to God, even after the storm, which has passed, the people of God will still, uh, the people will still be under this gross darkness, which means that the people will be in a worse predicament than the predicament itself. But the glory of the Lord shall rise upon those who are connected and who are believers in Jesus Christ. I come to tell you that no matter what the devil has meant for evil, God is about to turn that thing around for your good. This is the hour where you're to run and hurry to the spoils because this is the hour where God is going to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can ask, think, dream, 
or even imagine according to the power that works on the inside of you. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place this morning. And I come to tell you, glory be to God, that there are those of you that are watching and you were just about ready to give up and throw in the towel. I'm telling you, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Hold on. There are supernatural intercessors who are about to intercede for you on your behalf. And I am believing God to do the supernatural in your life in this hour and in this moment. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me very, very carefully. You're going to sow a seed today, a supernatural sacrificial seed of release. That means sacrificial. A sacrifice is never measured by how much you have given is always measured by how much you have left. God wants to challenge you and he's challenged me and he's challenging you. Remember what I said, every single Sunday I sold a sacrificial seed of a thousand dollars over and above my tithe and my offering and then I placed a demand on that seed believing that God was going to work it out and what did he do? He worked it out for me and the same God that worked it out for me will work it out for you. That's the God that I serve. And that's the God that you serve. This is what he spoke to me. He says, tell the people of God that I am now ready. I'm now ready to partner, to walk, to connect with them in the supernatural. So as you sow your supernatural seed of sacrifice for a release, God says he's standing in agreement with you for this miracle in your life. You are about to walk into divine joy, divine healing, and divine financial release. This is going to be your year of debt cancellation and wealth transfer as you sow the seed, as you sow the seed. And he spoke to me and he says, there are three areas that I want you to sow seed in, three areas. The first group of you are like me. You need God to perform a supernatural miracle that goes against nature and goes against all that is natural. Those, those of you that are watching, there are 30 of you that are watching, your seed challenge this morning is $1,000. A supernatural sacrificial seed of $1,000. $1,000. $1,000. That's the sacrifice that you're going to make. And you're going to see God do something extraordinary. As you release this seed, he said it's going to open up three areas in your life. Three areas are opening up in your life. What is it going to do? It's going to release supernatural joy, supernatural healing, and supernatural money. And supernatural money is favor. It is the favor of God, God's favor. Your bank account might not never run over, but whatever your need is, God is going to meet that need. I am not a man, the word of God said, that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man that I shall repent. Have I not spoke it? If I said it, I will bring it to pass. This is your hour to watch God. The second group of individuals, you're sowing a sacrificial, supernatural, sacrificial seed of release of $107, 107, 107, 107. It is going to be a year of miracles that will transpire in your life because of your obedience. As you begin to obey God, God is going to move on your behalf. If God can raise my mother up out of a sick bed, out of a coma, glory be to God, with, the, with, 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 with her lungs filling up with fluid and her kidneys failing and don't have to be on dialysis. Yes, sir. Great day in the morning. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. This is not a joke. I'm not talking about someone in Africa. I'm not talking about someone in Spain. I'm talking about somebody in South Carolina, somebody that you can pick the phone up to and talk. The miracle working power of God has no respect of any person, but God wants to get you to a place where your faith is built to a level where you would trust the word that comes out of the mouth of the preacher. And I'm speaking this word as your faith is being built 
because a testimony is not just thanking the Lord for your life, health, and strength. Food on the table or clothes on your back. That's a speech in a storefront church when you're waiting for more people to come. A testimony is an undeniable experience that you've had with God in the past to sustain you for any present or futuristical difficulties. A testimony is data and proof that the God that brought you out before will turn around and do it again. And the God that I serve, the God that I serve is going to bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. I can sense in the spirit right now. I sense in the spirit right now that there are many of those who are actually watching and the enemy has been attacking you. He's been attacking your joy. He's been attacking your health. He's been attacking your finances. Well, the Holy Ghost just told me to tell you that as you release this supernatural sacrificial seed of release, your joy will be restored to you supernaturally. And your peace comes along with the joy. But supernatural healing, things are going to change. I sense a warmth in my spirit. I know he's healing cancer right now. And he's destroying spirits of infirmity right now. And when I say spirits of infirmity, I'm talking about spirits. I'm talking about sicknesses uh, that are brought on th due to or through demonic activity. Uh, like the woman in Luke's gospel who could not make her way to the temple because she was bent over continuously. And when she saw Jesus, he said, woman, thou art loose. And that demon got off of her back and she was able to stand straight up. I'm talking about the young man who had the withered hand and the Lord reached out on the Sabbath day and pulled his hand out. And he said, stretch forth thy hand. And that infirmity left his body. I'm talking about the man who was possessed with demonic, with demons, demonic activity in the mountains and in the tombs. And Jesus said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. I'm talking about freeing your mind and freeing your joy and freeing your health and freeing your financial wealth. This is the word of the Lord for you, that this is the year of the crossover and every promise that God made to you, he is going to fulfill it in your life. I want to say this again, storms that come to make you strong sometimes makes you weak first. But I come to tell you that when you come out of this storm, oh, I feel like I'm in an old fashioned Holy Ghost crusade. I come to tell you when you come out of this storm, that's a good place to get up and start walking around because I decree it and declare it. And by the power of the decree, so be it unto you that this is your year for miracles. And I want to place some tools in your life that I know is going to bless you. I want to put some tools in your life that I know is going to bless you that you can reflect upon because after this word has gone forth, then are going, then the ravens are going to come and the buzzards are going to come. It's going to be equivalent to a sower that went forth to sow seed and scattered the seed around. And here comes the ravens and the buzzards and the demonic birds to come and try to steal the word of the Lord from you. The thief cometh but only to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what the word of God says. He says, but I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. The word of the Lord is clear. It says the thief cometh but for two. His only purpose in coming is to steal, kill, and destroy, which means that stealing, killing, and destroying should never be associated with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus comes that you might have life and that more abundantly. And I want to sow some seed into your life as you're sowing seed into the ministry of Benny Hen, that we can take this gospel of the kingdom around the world and that in this year, this year that is coming, where the enemy is going to be throwing everything at us, we can stand in the light of God and stand affirm knowing that the God that we serve has given us power over the works of the enemy. This is truly a spiritual warfare, and the enemy is literally fighting us on every hand. And so I want to get some weapons into the hands of every single warrior out there so that when the enemy comes, you can fight the good fight of faith. For every person that would sow that seed of a thousand, sow that seed of 77, and those of you that would sow the seed of 107, I want to send you some ministry gifts. Uh, witchcraft in the pews. Uh, who's sitting next to you, breaking the spirit of witchcraft and also spiritual warfare that will teach you on how some of these sicknesses that you are experiencing, the doctors cannot find, they cannot diagnose them and they cannot find the symptoms because you're not sick, you're under a demonic satanic attack. 
And then I want to send you uh, words uh, spoken, which are encouraging words out of my devotion that I will send to you, glory be to God, to fill the room like I filled my mother's room with the anointed singing and the anointed word of God so that breakthrough could transpire in her life and breakthrough can come into your life. In a few moments, I'm going to be start praying for you. And as I begin to pray for you in a few moments, I want you to understand that things are going to break. But you have to connect with me. As the word of the Lord just went forth in your life, you know that God is speaking to you. He's speaking to 30 of you to sow a seed of $1,000, an uncommon, supernatural, sacrificial seed of $1,000. Your business is going to turn. Miracles are going to take place. I just hear prison doors opening up. Unbelievable things are going to transpire because of your seed and the demand you have placed on that seed. Then there's thousands of you that are watching today that you need to get into the soil of miracles, a seed of 107, believing God for a miracle. And for everyone that was sent a $77 seed, I'm going to send you this package along with those others that are sowing the seed. Now it's time for us to remember our God, to remember who Jesus is. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. I want to say this to you today, that I'm rejoicing. I came to Benny Hens ministry. He allowed me to sit in the place that he sits. He gave me the opportunity to share with the world and with the nations what happened to my mother and what happened in my life. I come to tell you that this year is going to be your year of supernatural miracles that's going to transpire in your life. I come to tell you, prepare yourself. Satan, you messed up this time around. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Remember the scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter number 36, verse number 21. Your land is lying desolate in order to hide the blessings from your enemy. It's now time for you to get up and go run because you are about to be blessed like never before. In fact, you're not dealing with desolence. You're not dealing with barrenness. You are dealing with a God who has hid your blessings. Your blessing is resting. But I come to tell you that I can see your blessing yawning right now. He's sitting on the side of the bed about to put on his slippers and walk through the house. And the miracles of God is about to overwhelm you. As you sow your seed, remember what you're releasing, supernatural joy, supernatural healing, and supernatural money, which is the favor of God. Father, I set myself in agreement today with your people and with my brother, Pastor Benny, for miracles of healing, joy, and financial blessings in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much. Pastor Benny, you've blessed my life and you've blessed the lives of millions. We believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to humanity and the troubles on this earth. The gospel, the gospel, and only the gospel is the solution. Pastor Benny Hinn is passionate about reaching the lost by obeying the mandate for all believers to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I'm talking about souls. Save my soul. Men and women around the world who have not heard the gospel. It's our duty, our privilege, our responsibility to tell them who else will. Nobody will. Jesus came to give his life for men and women, and for me, and for you, to have the privilege to tell the world awesome.